Okay, here we go. So this is my completed sample surgical gown. And the open goes towards the back. And you slip your arms into the sleeves. And then this overlap goes in front and your arm goes through the bound edge and it comes around. So it looks like this. like this in the back. So that's what we're working on. With a little trial and error, I'm going to cut the cuff ribbing at 10 and a half by eight and a half. The ribbing that we have is a little bit tighter knit than the one on the sample gown. So I decided we needed a little bit more room so it doesn't cut off circulation. So with the bigger pieces, you end up with two complete sets plus one extra piece, so two and a half sets. So this is the pattern for the surgical gown laid out on my floor. And you can see that the pattern is really huge, but I think once we open up the fabric and lay out the pattern, really the trickiest parts are the curves, and you could trace those and cut them out. And there's a lot of straight lines, so that should make it easier. We can just line up with the edges. For the sleeves, they do need to be cut twice, so you could cut them individually or wait till you cut out the big pieces and then fold them, so you can cut them at the same time. So I also laid it out this way so you could see how the pieces go together. So there's just that one narrow piece on the left, and then the rest is all cut in one. So it's a really big, huge piece that folds around the body twice. Next, I think I'll put the sleeves together. So I have my big pieces and mine has a seam that's from piecing the fabric. So just ignore that. I am going to sew in white so that you can see it better. But of course, when you're making the gowns, I would use a matching thread if possible. So I have the bottom of the sleeve and then I have the top pieces and they should line up together. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin these together. So this bottom edge, it is a little curved on the bottom part um, and I didn't put my notches. So if you want to double check, you can make a little clip in the center of the top part of the sleeve so that you can make sure to line up with the center on the bottom part of the sleeve. So I'm just gonna pin these together and I like to pin perpendicular to the edge because then it's easy to pull them out or to sew over them. So I'm just gonna pin these together and then we'll get back together. I have my sleeve top and bottoms pinned together and you may have noticed that the cap of the sleeve is fairly straight and there's not really a front and a back. So that hopefully will make it easier with this fabric that we're gonna be using because it doesn't really have a right and a wrong side. So you don't have to worry about it a front and a back uh, because it will fit either way. So looking at, this, at the garment, the gown that we have to look at, the seams were surged, just surged. And so I'm gonna to go to my serger and use a four thread stitch. If you don't have a serger, you could do a straight stitch with a zigzag or an overlock stitch on your machine. There is a 5 8 inch seam allowance, so if you're on the serger, you can trim off a little bit. So I'm just going to sew this edge straight, and then I'll take it to the iron and press it to one side. I'm at my serger, and of course, I don't want to serge over the pins. And I have a mark for 5 8 but basically you're just going to cut about an eighth of an inch off. I do like to lift up the presser foot so I can tuck my fabric under there, just to make it a little easier. And I'm just going to sew all the way down. I'll repeat that with my other sleeve and then I'm going to head to the iron. So here at the iron, I'm just going to take my iron and I'm going to press that sleeve seam down towards the bottom. And just ignore this seam right here, it's for piecing my fabric. You don't need to worry about top stitching or anything, just get that pressed and it will be fine. You're going to fold it so that the stretchy ends are together and it does help if you have marked your centers 
So I lost mine. So I'm just gonna fold them in half and clip again so that I have a middle mark on my sleeve and on my cuff. And that's just gonna help to distribute the fullness evenly. Okay. So I'm gonna lay out my sleeve and I'm gonna take my cuff that I folded in half and I'm gonna match them up at those notches. So basically at the center, put a pin and then I'm going to take the edges and match those at the end, the far left and the far right. Then I like to fold it again to find the middle and then I'm gonna match up this middle to this middle. It doesn't have to be exact exact, but you do wanna to try to distribute those gathers that are gonna end up the fullness so that it looks better. And then you can stretch this part and put another pin in the middle area. And I really do find that you wanna put a, a good number of pins because it's going to help you to be able to control it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then I'm gonna sew it together. So I'm pretty confident in my ability to wrangle this and I'm also a little impatient, so I'm gonna go straight to my serger. If you're at all worried about it, I would start on the sewing machine and of course, if you don't have a serger, you can sew it there with just a regular straight stitch. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attach this at a 5 8 seam allowance. So I'm going to tuck under so that it will hold it a little bit for me because what I'm going to need to do is tug so that the layers line up. So you would just do this before you sew the side seam. So now that I have my cuff, I am going to come over here and line it up. I'm just gonna put a couple pins. So I'm gonna line up the seams and I'm gonna start at the edge of the cuff. So I'm gonna just sew my seam down. Now, if you don't have a serger, of course, you could do this with a straight stitch, but now I'm ready to just come back over here and sew my side seam. Unless you have a sleeve board, I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to open the sleeve up or flatten the sleeve so that you can press the side seam to one side. Otherwise you could put it over your sleeve board. That would be even easier. So I have the pieces of my gown and I wanna take the big piece and attach the little piece to it. So the little piece has this long straight edge, which is not what we're gonna use. And then it has this armhole and the short edge. So we're gonna be matching up the short, shorter edges for this side seam here. I would suggest pinning it and then you can sew it or serge it, whichever you prefer. I'm here at the serger and I'm serging this side seam of the gown, attaching the smaller piece to the bigger piece. And you'll notice this is where you can really clean up your stitching or your cutting, sorry. You can cut up, clean up your cutting if it's uneven. Then you wanna take this over to the ironing board and press it flat. At the ironing board, I've got that side seam that I just sewed and I'm just going to press it flat so that it lays nicely. You'll notice that the outer edges are straight. So the bottom one is the hem and then we're also gonna do a hem on these vertical edges. So you've got your arm opening and then over here where it's straight, we're going to fold that under a quarter of an inch. Make sure that you're going towards the wrong side where your side seam is. So you're gonna fold that under and press it a quarter of an inch and then a half an inch. You can get out your seam gauge if you want. It doesn't have to be exact because it's just the hem, but quarter of an inch 
to finish the raw edge and then a half of an inch and then you'll be ready to sew it down. Okay, so I have one of my pieces of fabric with the edge pressed and I'm going to top stitch or stitch this down close to the fold. Um, I have a nice little mark that's about a sixteenth of an inch from the edge and you want to reverse at the beginning. Just use your normal straight stitch and I'm just going to go all the way down on both pieces. Uh, you could put some pins in here, of course, if you wanted, but I'm finding, at least with this cotton, that the pressing is holding it, but the polyester fabric might be a little bit more tricky, so we'll see. Okay, so you're going to repeat that with both of those vertical edges so that you end up with your finished hem, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. I have my bias pieces here and I am using a contrast fabric to make it easier for you to see what's going on and add a little interest and I'm just folding them in half and pressing them in half. I'm going to try to make this application as easy as possible for you. We do have two of these because there is one for the neck and one for the armhole. So go ahead and get them both ready right now and then you'll be good to go for the next step. Okay, so I have my gown here and I'm looking for the edge that has the hem, the vertical hem, and the armhole, the deep curve, but does not have a side seam. So I'm in the right place and I'm going to be attaching the bias tape to the wrong side and then flipping it to the right side so that my top stitching looks nice from the outside. So to do this, I'm going to pin a piece of my bias tape along this edge, um, just gently curving with it. So I'm going to start and I have this extra, you know, I can cut that off in a minute. So I'm going to line it up with the edge and gently stretch it if I need to when I get to the curves. It is on the bias, so it should be flexible and be able to go where we need it to. So I'm just gonna continue pinning about every two or three fingers all the way around. I have my bias tape pinned all the way around my neckline and I'm ready to sew on the sewing machine with a straight stitch. And this time we're gonna do a quarter of an inch. So line up Mine is a little mark on my presser foot, so a quarter of an inch from the edge because we're going to fold this a couple times. I would put the needle down if you can and just sew all the way around the curve. Okay, I would take a moment and you can cut off this extra while you're trimming your thread. And I would just double check the other side. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to make sure there aren't any like puckers. And we can trim this side too, get that out of the way. And now we're going to take this and bring it, we want the seam allowance going up, and then we're going to bring this around to cover everything. And I'm thinking maybe just pin it, because we're going to top stitch, or you can do, do it without pins. But you want the fold to go slightly past that stitching, and then we're going to top stitch this. So just a little bit in from the edge. And hopefully, it doesn't have to be exactly exact, but you want to try to sew close to the edge and the goal is to completely encase that seam so that we have a nice finished edge, nice bound edge. Just try to make sure you don't run off the edge. Okay, so you'll notice that quarter of an inch seam allowance was just about perfect so that we didn't have to do any trimming. Trying to save us some steps here. Oh, I'm 
out a thread. So you get the idea. You're going to go all the way until you finish. Okay, I'm back. So I finished wrapping that edge and it should look nice on the top. It's not quite as perfect on the inside, but we do have a nice bound edge that is going to be part of the overlap part of the gown. Okay, this is another of those details that's really important. So find the side seam and make sure it's facing you. And then we're gonna skip one shoulder seam. We have the neckline. We're gonna go to the next shoulder seam. Then we have the armhole. These two are going to get pinned together. So, this one is still flapping, the one that's by the side seam. That's really important because we're going to bind the neck and then this is going to get sewn. It's a lot of little details, but they're important to help things get together correctly. So pin this shoulder seam and then you're going to sew it together and you can press it towards the front or towards the back when you're done. So we'll do that and meet back. I'm at the serger. You could do this on your sewing machine. So I'm sewing that shoulder seam. And then I can go to the iron and press that towards the back. And then we'll be ready to put some more binding on. Okay, I wanna repeat one more time just sew that one shoulder seam. Do not do the other ones yet. All right, so I have my gown. Here is my shoulder seam that I just sewed. And then to the left, you should have the armhole that we already bound. We're gonna do the same thing with the bias tape to this neckline. And so we're on the wrong side so we can flip it onto the right side. So I'm gonna pin along the neck edge and this is more of a curve than the armhole was so just make sure that you line up the raw edges and you'll notice that the neckline is going to do some folding and creasing so we'll just need to be careful of that when we actually sew it so that we don't actually catch anything here we go so my neckline bias is all pinned i'm going to sew at a quarter of an inch around the curve and this one i need to be extra careful to make sure that i'm not catching the fabric so you might need to do a little bit of rearranging try to keep it flat here where you're sewing So it may wrinkle, you know, make some, some folds over here. That's fine. Just try to make sure it's smooth right here. Okay, all the way around. Okay, and then cut that extra off. And once again, double check that you don't have any creases that were caught. Okay, looks good. So we're ready to flip it over and start doing the top stitching. So turn it so that the right side is up. And then just like we did with the armhole, we're gonna push that seam allowance toward the top and we're gonna fold that binding over the edge. And top stitch it down. Just keep an eye because this is curvier and it may not cover completely. So just do the best you can to get it. If you have to, if it's really not working, you could go back and trim that neckline. Of 
course, you can pin this first if you prefer or even press it. And using a matching thread will also hide a multitude of sins. Okay, so the puzzle continues. Now that we've done the binding, we should be able to sew the shoulder seams. So keep in mind that this should be the right side, mine is backwards right here. So I'm gonna take my armhole, that deep curve, and pin those two together. And hopefully if I made my pattern right, they should match up nicely. Okay, so I would just pin all the shoulder seams right now. So then we have our neck and it is gonna be open. So if we move over here, we should have the other side of the neck and our other vertical hem piece that can come right here and get pinned. Okay, so we have two more shoulder seams to sew either at your serger or at your sewing machine. So we'll sew those and then move on to the sleeves. Shoulder seam time. So I'm going to sew my 5 8 seam. So we're always doing 5 8 except for the binding is a quarter so you don't have to trim. I'm just going to continue right over to my other one. And the nice thing about this is it's going to clean up the bias tape too. All right, now the moment of truth. We're going to see if I really did a good job making this pattern. So you have your gown. We're going to turn it wrong side out and find one of your armholes. So you can find it because there's nothing done to it yet. So find one of your armholes. And then the good news is the sleeves don't really have a front and back. So you can go either way. So grab one of your sleeves and you want your sleeve to be right side out. And we're going to set in these sleeves. So you're going to tuck the sleeve into the gown. We're going to find those side seams and match the sleeve to the gown and pin and then you should have some notches to match up the center of the sleeve so the middle of the sleeve you should have a notch that you can match up to your shoulder seam and then a couple more notches to help you pin this so we're going to pin all the way around and then we'll be ready to sew it Okay, we're almost on the final stretch. So you're going to sew the sleeves in and you probably don't want to jump right on the serger. You probably want to start on your sewing machine, but I want to get this done. So I am going to jump in and just be really careful. So you're going to sew in your two sleeves using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So do the same thing with the other one. Hopefully you don't end up with any creases because there wasn't a lot of extra fabric. So good luck, finish your other one, and then one more step. Okay, final stretch. So everything should be done now, except for the bottom, which I'm having a hard time finding. So you still have this bottom hem. We're gonna do it exactly the same as we did the side, the vertical ones. So just the quarter inch and then a half inch and sew it down. And then you should have a surgical gown. Congratulations.